Hi. Welcome to today's lifelong learning session. My name is Leslie, and we're so glad that you're here to join us today. Before we get into today's presentation, I would like to take just a moment to share a little bit more about our work here at Purdue for Life. The Purdue for Life Foundation was established in 2020 by uniting the Purdue Alumni Association and the University Development Office. We help people who love Purdue stay connected, get involved, and give back. We engage alumni, friends, and fans through a variety of programs and events, including alumni clubs, affinity networks, travel and volunteer opportunities, student programs, and alumni lifelong learning programs. Please take a moment to enjoy this short video that shares more about our work here at the Foundation. Stay connected, get involved, give back. We help people who love Purdue do just that. The Purdue for Life Foundation was created in 2020 by uniting the Purdue Alumni Association and the University Development Office. We're here to serve and advance Purdue, working across the West Lafayette campus and far beyond it. At a high level, Purdue for Life includes the Purdue Alumni Association, President's Council, John Purdue Club, and the brand new Parents and Families Club. We also encompass Purdue Foundation Student Board and Purdue Alumni Student Experience, or PACE, the largest student organization on campus. We connect Boilermakers throughout the world to the university through region and interest-based clubs and networks. In fact, we have more than 70 alumni clubs around the country, international alumni networks in more than 100 cities across the globe, in multiple affinity networks, including Purdue Black Alumni Organization and Purdue Women's Network. And we're just getting started. What does it all mean for you? One organization is now driving and coordinating all alumni, friend, and fan-related activities, and offering you even more ways to engage with the university you love across your lifetime. We're streamlining communications and making our flagship digital magazine, Purdue Alumnus, available to all Boilermakers. We're offering a wealth of new and expanded opportunities for you to stay connected and get involved through alumni living and through lifelong learning, volunteerism, travel, and recent graduate programs. And you don't want to miss our signature events. There are countless opportunities for those who love Purdue to make an impact through giving their time, talent, and treasure and what an impact you made during the fiscal year that just ended. The collective generosity of our Purdue family reached an all-time high. Talk about a giant leap. You are powering Purdue. Thanks to you, Purdue continues to strengthen its reputation in teaching and research while remaining affordable and accessible to brilliant young minds. And because of you, Purdue is stronger than ever. Together, through small steps and giant leaps, we can grant even more opportunities for future Boilermakers as we ensure Purdue grows ever stronger. It's our privilege at Purdue for Life and our persistent pursuit to help people who love Purdue stay connected, get involved, and give back. On behalf of our team, thank you and Boiler Up. With that, let me introduce our speaker today, Charlie Lyons. Charlie Lyons is a multi-dimensional professional whose entire career has focused on developing others. A former Division I athlete, Charlie brought her love of leadership coaching to the corporate and nonprofit and higher education sectors, serving more than 20 years as an expert in developing authentic emerging leaders and leadership teams. She is a certified strength coach, a master consultant with growing leaders, a fascinate certified advisor, and an accredited coach by the International Coaching Federation. Charlie has a passion for working with individuals and teams to develop future leaders in all settings. Welcome, Charlie. Thank you, Leslie. 
Hello, Boilermakers. Good morning. Um, good morning in West Lafayette. I don't know where you may be around the world, um, but uh, greetings to you wherever you are, and thank you for um, the gift and the investment of your time today. Um, I'm really excited to be here um, and ready to move us from average to all-star. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, we're gonna leave our time um, better than what we came today. For those of you that are in the room, um, in your cups, you have a tape measure. And those of you that are joining us virtually, you don't have a tape measure, but I'm gonna have you create one um, of your own. You can do it on your computer, you could do it on a napkin if you're in a coffee shop. Um, but essentially what we're gonna do with this tape measure is um, we're not looking at 36 inches, we're looking at the centimeter um, portion down below. I have a picture of it here. Anyway, along the, the bottom of this, the, really what we're going for here is along the bottom in the centimeters um, portion, we are looking for a timeline from zero to mine goes to 102, okay? So you're looking at a timeline from zero to 102. All right, everybody has, have, hopefully has theirs. If you're creating one um, away, we're gonna be working on, um, on this timeline. This is actually a timeline of your life. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm aiming for 102. I hope that we can, I can still be adding value at 102. Um, so I want you to look at those bottom numbers and in between one and 100, I want you to put a star right now on your timeline um, of your age that you are now. So put a star at your age. There is no cheating on this part, and you should not be copying off your neighbor if you are sitting beside someone, okay? So hopefully you have a star um, w at your age that you are right now. I want you now to look at your star, and I want you to look backwards. So for me, it would be 50-something, and I'm looking backwards through my 40s, 30s, 20s, teens, okay? And I want you to plot, think about and plot significant people in your life um, at different ages and stages. Think about the positive impact that they had on your life. It may be a teacher, it may be a family member, it may be a coach, it may be a professor, it may be a boss. Start plotting some of the people um, that had a significant impact in your life. While you do that, I'm going to tell you a little story about when I first started writing my book. Um, I was upstairs in my loft at home. It was a beautiful, sunshiny um, day, and so I was sitting in the sunshine um, on the floor in my loft. And I, as I started preparing myself to write my book, I was thinking about people that had had a significant impact in my life. Um, and thankfully, I'm very blessed, I was able to come up with like 18 people pretty much right away as I was thinking through the different ages and stages that it had a significant impact in my life. Um, and it really, for me, started as a kind of a book planning session, but it really became a gratitude session. Um, and so I was able, I'll, ne I'll never forget sitting in the sunshine um, and just being able to spend time, um, a, a moment with each one of those people and the significance that they had in my life, and it really um, turned into a gratitude session. Um, and I hope that will be one of the impacts um, from today for you as well. So hopefully you're plotting people. Hopefully you will continue to plot people as you go. This isn't something that once I'm done and I move on to the next thing, you can stop. You can even use this timeline in the, in the coming days. So I want you to be thinking about um, the people that have had a positive impact in your life and what positive impact did they have? You know, I, maybe one word that you could plot with them. Maybe it was, this person gave me belief in myself. This person helped me with my thesis, right? This person um, gave me vision on what I could become in life. So um, plot those people and maybe use one word and how they impacted your life. And then I want you to think about how did what you learn from that person, how is that playing out in your life, right? Um, how is the belief that they instilled in you, how have you used that over the last 15 or 20 or 35 years um, since they put, instilled that into you? And so I want you to think about what, what are you using and how are you using it, 
Okay. Um, many times we stand on the shoulders of those that have gone before us and that have impacted us and mentored us. And so I think it's important to continue to, to look at them and see what impact they have. And then I want you to think too about, you know, those are the people that have helped make us who we are. But then I also want you to think about what if you hadn't had those people come alongside you in your life, okay? We think about the positive and where it's taken us, but I think we need to think too about how would our lives be different if we didn't have those mentors and people um, that chose to invest in us. Um, so I want you to think about that. That's your challenge here for the next couple of days. Hopefully this will resonate with you for the next um, few days, maybe even few weeks. Um, just take some time to spend in gratitude for those that have impacted you um, and that have allowed you to live the, the wonderful life um, that we live, okay? So go back to your timeline for a minute. Um, and I want you to think about now, you're, you're at your age and you're looking back and you've looked at people that have impacted you. I also want you to plot some people on there whose lives that you have impacted, okay? Put people's names on there. Maybe it's Caitlin, who I helped with an internship opportunity. Maybe it's the um, team members' names that I, when I coached seventh grade basketball. Um, go back and think through who are some of the peoples whose impact um, you've made in their lives, okay? And go ahead and, and plot people there. Here you go, Leslie. Work on plotting those names on there and then um, spend a little bit of time, maybe one word of the impact that you had. Maybe you were a coach or maybe you um, taught them how to play piano or music. Um, look at the positive impact that you had. Maybe there's one or two words or a short phrase that you can put beside their name and how you mentored and helped them. And then think about how have you seen that evidence in, your, in their lives, right? I mentioned Caitlin, who I helped with an internship experience. Actually, her story um, is the opening story in my book. Um, and I think about Caitlin, and uh, she's just a beautiful young professional, and um, she dreamed of going into the fashion industry. She came back from a um, top Fortune 50 internship. It was like, I don't ever want to do that again. And so we worked through um, working and what she really, really wanted to do. And she really wanted to open her own boutique. And she ended up doing that. Um, and really had to convince her parents that that's what she wanted to do. Um, since then, she has closed her boutique, but she now works for Spanx, which is huge in the fashion industry. So when I think about um, people that I might plot on my um, timeline, I would put Caitlin, and I'm just so proud of her. She's such a beautiful young woman, um, and I might just put Spanx in there, right? Um, for those, there may be men on the call that don't know what we're talking about. Ask your wives, your girlfriends, and, and other women that you work with. Um, but Spanx is a, is a huge, um, huge, fashion, huge in the fashion industry, okay? I want you to think about those people that you've plotted and whose impact you've had, uh, impact that you've had in their lives, and think about how would their lives be different if they hadn't come across you, right? Um, I like to think that, that uh, Caitlin would have ended up where she needed to be, but we were able to get her um, on course a little bit more quickly, um, being able to mentor her through that. And I just want to take a minute to say, too, thank you for the impact that you have in other people's lives. We're all in this together. Um, and I fully believe that when you take others from average to all-star, it really makes you um, an all-star. And that's what we're gonna, our whole reason for being here. Um, and we're gonna discuss that as we go um, through our time together here a little bit more. I also want you to think about, um, spend a little time, and I want to take some time to think about the concept of being chosen, right? Um, if you think about chosen, the dictionary meaning is having been selected as the best or the most appropriate, okay? I want you to think about a time when you were chosen. Maybe it was for a playground team. Maybe it was your dream date called you. 
to go out on a date, or maybe eventually they ask you to marry them. Um, maybe it was you were awarded a scholarship uh, from a lengthy list of other applicants. Maybe you made the team. Like I remember in the seventh grade when I made the basketball team, I remember going to bed the night before and being so nervous because tryouts were over. And then I got up the next morning. My dad was the high school principal, so I rode with him to school so that I could go to the, and I'll never forget, the office, the athletic office. It was dark, but there was this white piece of paper hanging on. I remember scanning that list of paper. Um, and I remember starting from the bottom up because my, my maiden name starts with an S. And so I started at the bottom up in case they went alphabetical. And I just remember once I was chosen and knew that I was chosen for that team, the sense of relief that I felt, okay? And kind of a sense of pride of, yay, this is something that I get to do, okay? So think about um, a time when you were chosen. You know, I even think about the other day, um, our, one of our animals, we have um, two cats, and I remember the cat crawled up on my daughter's lap and she was like, I am chosen from everybody else in the room. It was significant to her that the cat chose to sit on her lap. Think about that feeling. Like she felt really, really good about it. And I want you to think about the feeling of being chosen. What words come to mind for you when you think about being chosen? For my daughter, it was love or ha ha, she chose my lap over everybody else. You know, when I made the team, it was relief. Um, it may be delighted. Maybe you felt honored. Um, lots of different emotions that come with being chosen. And that's what I want you to think about is that those emotions that come with being chosen and remember how that feels. Okay, so go back to your timeline right now and look at your star. And I want you to look forward on your timeline. There are no names, there's nothing looking forward on your timeline from your age to 102. You are at a significant place right now to impact other people's lives. Who are you choosing? Remember the emotion that you can create for people by choosing them, okay? And that's what we're gonna talk about here and I'm gonna give you a simple, um, three simple steps to walk through positively impacting someone else's right life. I want you to write their names down, okay? Um, just kind of, this is kind of brainstorming. It's not, this is the one that I'm definitely gonna do, but I want you to start thinking about who can you choose um, and write those names on your timeline. Maybe it is you are mentoring another mother right now, write their name in there. Maybe you are caring for older parents, write their names in there. Maybe you are teaching a child to read, write the child's name in there. Maybe you're leading a Girl Scout troop or a Boy Scout troop. Put your, you know, few names of people in your troops there. I, but I really, what I want you to start thinking about is between your star now and, and looking forward, whose lives are you going to be positively impacting and who will you choose from that, okay? And remember the significance and the emotion that comes um, from being chosen. Now I want you to think a little bit too about, and I want you to write a couple of names in there, of names that come, come to mind that really um, need you to come alongside them and mentor them, okay? There are obvious ones. You probably got some of the obvious ones and you probably already have them plotted, but I want, to, want you to think about who are people in your life that in are the ones that need you to intentionally come alongside them, okay? This tends to be a little bit harder question, and you may not be able to write their names down right now, but it's something that I challenge you to think about. Who are the ones that intentionally need you to come alongside them? So you now have a list of your chosen people that you can choose, okay? I want you to think about how you will be intentional with them let's just say here in 2023, right? Here we are at the beginning of March. We have 10 months ahead of us. Um, I want you to think about how you can be significant um, to them. And the reason that I want us to look forward is because right now we need each other um, more than ever. Are we doing okay with slides, gentlemen? Good, all right, great. Um, we are coming off a global pandemic. <clears throat> 
And, and we're still feeling the implications of that. Um, we know that we have had um, a loss, it lost connections with people. Um, it's great to be presenting to people um, with people in the room today, but we know that we've lost connections and those face-to-face -face interactions um, that are so important. We know that there, we also have a loss in learning, or I'm, I'm sorry, there's social emotional implications. Um, when we think about the social emotional impact, I, I read a statistic the other day that said 25 there was a 25% of increase of anxiety and depression. Um, and I was actually kind of surprised that that 25% wasn't a little bit more. But these are some of the implications that we're seeing um, coming off of the pandemic. And I, I think that's especially true for our young people. You know, I work with a lot of emerging leaders and I'm seeing that. Um, there is, there's a learning loss. Oh, I did have learning loss up there. Um, I read a statistic um, back from October 2022, so that was, what, five or six months ago, um, that said our students were, were at, a, at, at a minimum losing a half year of math. So during the pandemic, they lost at least a half a year in their math skills and at least a fourth of the year um, in their reading skills. And I actually talked to um, a third grade teacher, a friend of mine, the other day and just asked her how things were going. I'd love to get a gauge on how we're doing. And she said it's, it's been um, probably one of her toughest years yet because the students that she has in class now as third graders, they were in kindergarten um, when the pandemic started. And so when you look at those, those very instrumental years in education and the foundation that's built during those years, um, she's really feeling it. And, but she said, and I, and I love this, that um, she said, we're doing our best to get caught up. Um, so I thank, I'm very thankful to the educators that are out there that are, that are working with our young people and working on getting them, getting them caught up. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of, lot of impact um, that came from living, living through COVID, right? And I'm sure that you can think of someone close to you um, who has been impacted. Like I said, we need each other now more than ever because of the impact of COVID, but we also need each other more than ever because we have a leadership gap in front of us. Um, I don't necessarily even call it a leadership gap. I call it a chasm that we may fall off of um, here soon. And here's, here's why I say that. There are 75 million baby boomers retiring sooner or later. And right now they're retiring sooner rather than later, okay? And we especially saw that during the pandemic. There is um, Generation X, which is my generation, is a much smaller generation. And so millennials and Gen Zers will be called into leadership because there's not enough leaders um, in Gen X to fill those leadership gaps that the baby boomers are gonna be leaving. And so, like I said, those millennials and Gen Zers are gonna be called into leadership um, many times before they're ready. And I don't mean that disrespectfully to the millennials or the Gen Zers, leadership and that sometimes it just takes time to learn and maturity. Um, and it's, it's no disrespect to you. I, I know you're working hard out there, but you're probably gonna be called into leadership before you're ready. Um, and really what we need to think about is our world in the next five to 10 years as these baby boomers are leaving and we have leadership gaps to step into, we need to be preparing, we need to be choosing um, young leaders to really help um, get them ready to lead our world. If you think about it, think about our churches, our schools, our workplaces. Um, what is that landscape gonna look like in five to 10 years? We have a leadership chasm before us and we need to bring others along. Gallup also does a lot of work um, with disengagement. And this has really become something, who ever knew the term quiet quitting before even last a year ago, right? Um, there is a lack of engagement in schools and in the workplace. On September 6th, Gallup recorded, reported that quiet quitters make up at least 50% of the workplace. Think about that. Quiet quitters make up at least 50% of the workplace. So think about that leadership chasm. We have young people that are hopefully learning to be leaders, right? And probably a number of them are quiet quitting. Um, and it's not just young leaders. There's probably leaders my age as well. Um, and I know that there are students in our schools that are quiet quitting. 
How can we choose them? How can we engage them? How can we bring them along? Okay. There's also a CDC statistic that I saw the other day, um, and this really hit me. Um, it was actually on February 13th, and it said that nearly three in five U.S. teen girls felt persistently sad or hopeless. And that is an upward trend. It actually had a graph, and it had an upward trend of 60%. There's a 60% increase over the past decade of sad and hopelessness feelings, OK? I used to teach high school. I have teenagers of my own. And I think I firmly believe in my heart that high school should be a time of trailblazing, not a time of trauma, right? Think about who are young people that you can come alongside. How can we help them cope? How can we help them hope? And how can we help them thrive? They're going to be our future leaders someday. They're going to be leading families. They're going to be leading community organizations. Okay? So thinking about those things, yeah, there's evidence here that we all need each other and we need to be um, lifting each other. Who do you know that needs to be chosen by you? And then I want you to think about what might happen if you don't choose them and we don't work together to help close this leadership gap. Something that I want you to think about um, over the next few days, next few weeks, moving into the future. As you can tell, I am a strong advocate for mentoring. Um, mentoring and coaching and I'm guessing that you are too, um, because you're here, you're attending this session. But I want to talk, there are, there are a couple of things that hold us back from doing that. Um, and maybe you're mentoring, maybe you're bringing other people along, but maybe you could do more. But I want to show you some of the reasons that we don't mentor. First of all, there, um, we don't feel worthy or qualified, right? I think everybody here is worthy and qualified. But sometimes we don't step into that because we're like, how do I know if I'm doing it right? Right? It's kind of like having a baby. There's no instruction manual that comes with it. Well, actually, I wrote one, and we'll get to that here in a minute. Maybe you don't mentor because you don't know how. Right? Maybe you're afraid that you'll make a mistake. Oh my gosh, I don't want to mess this person up. Right? Um, one that's probably going to hit home with most people is it's hard to find the time right, to mentor others. Um, but I will say this. It needs to become a priority, and we typically find time for the, our priorities, don't we? So, and then the, th the fourth one is um, sometimes it's uncomfortable or awkward, right? Um, sometimes it's awkward on how do you approach someone to say, hey, I want to mentor you. We're going to talk about a conversation starter here in a little bit. Um, I will say, though, awkward only lasts momentarily. Transformation lasts a lifetime. Think about the people on your timeline that have impacted you. They've impacted you for a lifetime. So awkward only lasts for a short time, but transformation lasts for a lifetime. And I think you will probably be pretty glad that you were awkward, okay? Um, the Average to All Stars title session drew you in, and I'm guessing that you're here probably um, because you do wanna make a difference. Um, but maybe you have one of the qualms that I listed. Um, one of those things is holding you back. We need you to get into the mentoring game. Um, we have far more need, greater, greater need today for mentors than we've ever seen um, before. So I'm going to help you get past these obstacles and find some innovative ways um, and be part of, solu uh, part of the solutions. Um, we can't leave them disconnected and alone. We need everybody connected and making each other better together. We can't leave people in emotional messes. We need them to thrive um, with all that life throws at them. We don't need to leave them disengaged. We want to engage them and help them lean in, enjoy their lives and careers. Um, we got to get over ourselves and over our excuses and keep leaning in to help, help others get connected and engaged. Because um, really, quite frankly, it's our future, right? A lot of hum and drum that I've talked about, kind of at a low, right? But the good news is that there are solutions to what I'm talking about. And I think there are a lot of solutions. Um, and they're not hard, and they don't necessarily take a lot of time. 
So I want you to look at, a time, at your timeline again, at your star where you are now. And like I said, the opportunity in front of you that you have to fill with major impact, okay? You have the opportunity to be an all-star, and I really think that when you choose to mentor someone, that takes you from average to all-star because you become extraordinary when you help someone else. And that's the reason that I wrote average to all-star. There it is. Really, average to all-star, I look at it as um, it's a how-to guide for mentoring. <clears throat> And I really believe that mentoring is no different than any other process. If you have a system that works, then it simplifies success in every part of the process. Having a good system for mentoring can help us solve um, the problems much more quickly and effecti effectively than we can on our own. Remember the excuse of, I'm not sure how to do it, or am I doing it right? Um, Average to All Star is gonna help you do that. And my system is three little words. Um, three little words, but I believe they make a big difference and a big impact. And they are a simple three-step process of discover, develop, and deploy. And I want to hit um, a couple of highlights in these three steps um, in, the, in the remaining time that we have together. First of all, discover. Look at your timeline. You've already worked on this step. Um, look at your timeline. You've already probably discovered and thought of some leaders um, that you would like to, to help um, mentor and come along in life. I also want to encourage you as you're out and about, you know, you find things um, that you're looking for. And that sounds really simple, that you find things that you're looking for. But for instance, um, I had a friend the other day who was talking about, oh, you know, I got a new car. And I thought it was so cool. The color of it was so cool. And then they started driving it around town and they saw four other cars that looked exactly like their really cool, unique car, right? It's because they found what they were looking for. And I think that's really true um, for us with people to mentor as well. Who, who do you observe in your everyday life? One of my fi favorite places of observing and finding people is, I mentioned I have two teen teenagers, and so I spend a lot of time um, in auditoriums and in gymnasiums um, at this point in my life. And I like to be pretty much down front when my kids are performing, but a lot of times I will go um, to games that I may be there to see someone else or whatever, and I love to sit high in the bleachers. Um, if I can, because I love to sit there and I love to watch people. I love to watch people interact. I love to watch especially young people. Um, you can tell who are influencers and who are not um, by things that happen. And I will say, look for influencers, okay? Influencers, be they good or be they bad. When I think about influencers, those are leaders. I think of leadership and influence as being very synonymous terms. So even if it's a bad influencer, right? Some of you can probably name some bad influencers. They have some leadership potential, right? Maybe you need to put them on, on your list and come alongside them and help guide them um, into the positive impact that they can make. But be looking um, and observing. Be looking for people that you can mentor as you go through these next couple of weeks of your life. And I will say also too, in my book on page 40, I um, have a four buckets exercise. Um, and I talk about four different buckets and this may be helpful to you as you're looking for people to mentor. First of all, the first bucket is people that are closest to me, right? Maybe your own children, it may be a niece and nephew, it may be your next door neighbor who you know really, really well. Um, sometimes those are the most obvious ones, right? Another bucket then is those that display dispositional leadership, okay? Dispositional leadership is they are leading by their disposition and who they are and the characteristics that they have as opposed to leading by a position or a title that they hold. Okay, that's one thing I love about um, being engaged with so many young people. People are like, oh, well, I'm not a leader because I don't have this title. And I'm like, yes, you are a leader because of who you are and the way you set an example. So look for dispositional leaders. They may not be the ones that jump out at you right, ahead, right um, immediately, but they're the ones that are typically will kind of maybe be the quieter ones um, that really have some great leadership potential. 
And then the third bucket is those that have influence, like I talked about earlier. Be it good or be it bad, you can pick out the influencers pretty easily. And then the fourth bucket are those who need a leadership experience to change the trajectory of their life, okay? Think about who do you need to come alongside that if you don't, what their trajectory might be, but if you do, how it's gonna set them on a chart um, into creating a different trajectory for them. So those are some ways um, to find and discover um, people that you should mentor. And I know we kind of talked about that awkward, awkwardness of becoming a mentor to someone. Maybe it's somebody that you're thinking about that you're like, I've never really talked to this person before, right? Um, one thing that I will say is um, there's a free download on my website and it's called a conversation starter. And it's really how to get the relationship kicked off. Um, and so great resource out there. Go use that free download, make it your own, but it gives you some simple steps on how to get that started. So that's on how to discover people um, to mentor. The next step then is to develop them. Okay, this is the, the meat and potatoes of the mentoring relationship is the development piece. Um, and let me give you a piece of advice. Stop giving advice. Kind of ironic, isn't it? That I'm giving you the, the advice of stop giving advice. But if you think about it, nobody wants to be told what to do, right? They don't wanna to be told how to do it they don't want a sage on the stage telling them how to do it. They want you to come alongside them and help them discover new insights and really be a guide by their side. You know, the world is changed by your example, not by your opinion. So think about that. Be there, you've got to believe in them and act as, I call it the bumper pads of life, right? To me, mentoring is like going bowling with kids you still have the goal of um, bowling a strike, rolling a strike, but yet they put the bumper pads in the gutters when the kids go, right? Sometimes they do it when I go too. But our role as mentors are to be the bumper pads. The young people know, create, and you may create a vision for them where they're going, but they're the one that has to roll the ball, right? And our job as mentors is to be the bumper pads, to bump them back into a um, place where they need to be if they start, stray too far right or too far left. So think about that. Stop giving advice. And I also want you to think too, think about projects that you've been on um, or things that you've done. People buy into what they help create, okay? so. I, I, if you're like me, I'm putting together a plan and we're gonna go through this, this action plan and I think these are what their goals should be and this is what the outcome's gonna be and I try to control and direct the whole thing, right? But I know from working with a lot of teenagers that a lot of times that goes over like a lead balloon, right? They, um, they wanna be part of the process. Um, bring them into the process. After all, it's their lives, right? Bring them into the process because they will help buy into um, what you create together and, and going through that process. One thing that I think is really helpful, hopefully this will be helpful to you. Um, in my book, I talk about the three spheres and you'll see the three spheres um, here. And I believe that these three spheres are very, very, very important, okay? Um, great people that have had really, really great impact, good leaders, um, have great qualities and great development in the three different spheres, okay? Um, when, you, when you think about them, those three spheres, you know, you think about character. You, you probably know some really, really great leaders that um, maybe have been on a national stage, but then they do something and there's a chink in their character and they fall from grace, right? Students, or students and emerging leaders have to have really, really strong character. If they don't, they're gonna fall and they're gonna, they're gonna stub their toes in leadership. There's the power skills. You may have heard of power skills um, referred to as soft skills. I don't like the term soft skills because I don't think there's anything soft about them. Um, having the, the skills of um, relating to people, being able to adapt to change, um, adaptability, and those kinds of things. And so you might look to develop um, power skills along with character skills. And then the third sphere that I like to talk about is that positive psychology piece. To me, it's a mindset piece, 
right? Um, there's a, the young man that I've observed lately and he's doing some wonderful things. But every time he starts to think about what he's doing, I can see his head shaking and he puts his head down and you can tell that he's not right in his mind, right? Like we've got to change some things. We've got to work on some things in his mindset. And so when, it, when you're looking for things to develop in, the, in those that you have chosen, um, there may be functional skills. Functional skill could probably be another circle on here. You know, maybe you're teaching them to play the piano or maybe you're teaching them to um, do a sport or conduct a, um, do something in your workplace, right? There's probably some, some functional skills that come along with that. Um, and sometimes those functional skills are very easily seen but the skills that we're working um, on developing that really, I believe, um, create, take them from average to all-star are the three spheres that I've mentioned here. So I want you to be thinking about um, who you are, how are you developing people? There's some ideas um, in the book there as well, but be thinking about um, those three spheres and what are some of the places that you can um, help them um, in the development stage, okay? and then choose one of them. Choose a, de, a competency and then um, go into an action plan. You've probably all seen action plans. There's different action plans out there. If you Google it, you're gonna see images that pop up. There just happens to be um, an action plan tool um, on my website as well. And then think about SMART goals, right? I always encourage people to um, include those SMART goals in there as part of the um, action plan. One place that I, I always give people um, some ideas on where to start, because some people are like, I, Charlie, you're talking about all this stuff and I'm still stuck. I don't know where to start, right? Um, I like to start with, and I do this with um, most of the young leaders that I work with, I start with a values exercise. I have a really, really simple exercise um, that challenges people to come up with two values, the two things that they value the most. And the reason that we take it down to two is because I like to think of them as your two values as two different rocks. You can hold them in your hand and you can pick them up every morning and you can put them in your pockets and carry your values around with you all day. And that helps you make decisions as you go through the day when you start living by those values. So I do have a real simple values exercise. If you want it, email me. It's, that's not on the website, but email me or, or message me on social media and I'd be happy to send you that values exercise. It's a really, really great starting point. And then one of the assessments that is one of my favorites, um, Leslie mentioned I'm a certified strengths coach, um, but I would encourage you to, a great place to start might be even with the Clifton Strengths assessment. Um, and I did notice I was, went online, and I think that assessment is normally about $29, um, but a little hack for you, if you go buy the book, Strength Finder 2.0, the book sells for $19.99 and there is an access code in there. And so you have both the, the um, assessment and um, the Strength Finder 2.0 book to, to reference. So a couple of places to start for you um, if you don't know where to start, okay? And then the last step that I wanna talk about is the deployment step and deploying um, our emerging leaders, okay? And I think this, this is a really important step because a lot of times I think it's forgotten right? You teach them something, you, they attend a training session and you've given them the information and then you just let them go off into the wild, wild west, right? Um, and so you're really thinking about the deploy step. You have to have that development plan that we talked about, but the, in, in this piece, there's really a deployment strategy on how they bring what they've learned and those things that they've developed to the world in their own unique way, okay? Let me um, give you an example, and this is one of the pieces that I use um, in my book. And it's, it's a T model, you've probably seen a T model before, um, but I feel like the T model really helps you plan how to deploy what your mentee has learned in a really deep and meaningful way, okay? And let me give you an example. So if I were looking at myself on this T model, you'll see the, um, the top portion of the T. That is fairly common knowledge or skills, okay? Let me give you an example. When my kids were in elementary school, I talked to their principal one time, and I looked at him and I said, don't ask me to bake cookies. <clears throat> he kind of looked at me. I said, I can bake cookies if you really, really need me to bake cookies. 
I said, but I have education in my background. I grew up in a high school administrator's home. I've taught, you know, I, teacher is the heart of who I am. I said, and I have a lot of experience. I can bake cookies if you need me to bake cookies, but I'd much rather serve on a textbook adoption committee. Or is there a calendaring committee? Or is there um, a committee that's choosing new teachers? Or could I mentor a new teacher? Really looking at using my skills in a deep way. You know, so if you look at the top of that T, I could fill things in there like baking cookies or selling tickets or serving refreshments. But those are things that a lot of different people can do, right? And those are important things. I'm not saying that I'm above those. That's really the, how they need me to help. I will. But look at the skills that your mentor, the person that you're bringing along, look at them in a deep way. What skills have they developed? And then help them think about how can they deploy those skills so that they can bring a lot of meaning um, to where they are able to add impact, right? Looking at their unique set of skills and their de the depth of knowledge is, is really, really important. Okay, so hopefully that T model will be important and I'm happy to help any, walk any of you through it um, when you get to the point of using it. So we need to discover, develop, and deploy, right? And I would say discover, develop, deploy, repeat. Discover, develop, deploy, repeat. Discover, develop, deploy, repeat. Hopefully you're gonna have an impact um, on other people's lives. You know, mentoring doesn't have to be a forever long process. It could be something that you're teaching someone pretty quickly, you've discovered that they need the help, you know how to develop them and how to do it, and then you've helped them figure out how to deploy it. Your work there is done, right? Move on to the next thing. Or maybe they have another competency that they need help with, all right? So discover, develop, deploy, and repeat should be the fourth step that I put in my book, right? Uh, they say it takes a village to raise a child. That applies to leaders too. It takes all of us to be developing leaders. My biggest hope is that this book and the action that you take from it will be like a stone that you throw into a pond um, that brings a ripple. I want you to be the ripple that you choose at least one person to mentor so that you can create that first ripple. Ripple. Let's try to send ripples across Purdue, our communities, our country, our world. You may be joining me from other places in the world because I believe once we start that first ripple and we keep rippling, those ripples become waves, right? The people that you mentor are gonna mentor someone else and the people that they mentor are gonna mentor the next person those ripples become waves. And when that happens, there's no telling what can happen. We won't have the leadership gap. We won't have the social emotional issues um, because those really, it really becomes world changing. Um, and that's my hope. And our future really depends on it. Um, really, the reason that I when, I, when I think about this and I, you'll see this graph that's pulled up, when my, my mission um, for creating mentors is simply because of what this slide says, right? When you come alongside someone and you um, give them that developmental investment that you see on the left-hand side of that graph, when you look at the trajectory, instead of having an average career path or an average leadership path, you are gonna help them start stronger as a leader and you are gonna help them go further faster. And look at that trajectory Look, you're going to have them, help them start stronger and you're going to get, help them go further faster, right? And that creates those ripple effects um, like we talked about. So it's a call to action. Join me in this journey. Um, I'd love to connect with you in several different ways. First of all, let's connect on LinkedIn. Um, hopefully that's, that's really simple. I would love to... Um, Love for you to send me an invitation because I don't know who all's with us today. So send me an invitation at Charlie Lyons um, and send me a little message with some of the names of the people that you are either presently mentoring or looking to mentor. I would love to hear that. Um, I am going to do a free master class, what I call a master class on this discover, develop, deploy um, material later this spring, probably in May. I'm, I'm working on that right now with my operations person. Um, so I want you to think about who do you know that also needs to hear the same message, right? 
Um, it's also going to be on the Purdue's for, for Life Foundation website. You can go back there um, and watch it as well. But, you know, there's a lot of great places where you can hear this message again. Um, maybe you need to hear it again, or maybe you can think of others that need to hear the message. We need a lot of people creating those ripples, right? Who else can we bring along with that? Um, and like I said, my website is a great place to start by downloading. Um, there's a, a toolkit there that you can help with mentoring. Um, there, you'll see um, in that toolkit, there are three spheres, um, a three sphere document. So if you want one of those to, to pull and to write on and that kind of thing, that's fine. The action plan is there. Um, the T model is actually in that as well. Um, and also on the website, you can see all the different services that I offer as well. Um, I do a lot of coaching programs for leaders and emerging leaders, um, do some speaking and some workshop topics that are there as well. Um, and I do leadership consulting and organizations to help with leadership development and mentoring and um, internship programs. So um, just some places for you to connect and some places for you to get uh, materials as, as well, things that will help you in this process. Oh, and you can also buy Average to All-Star on Amazon. Average to All-Star. Um, if you type in Average to All-Star, it will pop up. And I will say, I think it is the best $20 that you will spend. Granted, I'm a little biased, okay? Couple parting thoughts as we finish up here. The other day I was driving through a small town and it's February here in Indiana, it's pretty cold. And I remember seeing this line of people that were kind of like lined down the street. And I thought, what in the world is going on? People are standing outside. Um, and it's winter time. Granted, we've had a really great winter, uh, you know, and mild winter here for February. Um, but as I started kind of looking at it a little bit more, I was like, oh, they're waiting in line at the funeral home, okay? And as I started to leave town and, and move on with my day, um, I couldn't help but think about what will others say about me at my funeral? And I want you to think about that, right? What are people going to say about you at your funeral? And I would love it if there was a big long line of people waiting to pay their respects because you chose them and you made them all stars, okay? Hopefully you can picture that line of people. Hopefully some of those names are on your timelines um, and on your list of people to mentor. You're needed now more than ever. It's time to get in the game. Um, you've got a guidebook with Average to All-Star, and I, I really want you to look at who can you choose to take from Average to All-Star. Because when you, when you mentor someone and you take them from Average to All-Star, you become an All-Star yourself. Remember, um, discover, develop, deploy, and repeat. Let's start the ripple effect. As Nike says, let's just do it. Right? Get over our excuses. Look at the names on your, on your timeline. Who are you going to bring alongside you? Because when you lead, people flourish. Go be an all-star. Thank you so much, Charlie. You're Let's welcome. give Charlie a round of applause. <laughs> that was awesome. And thank you to those that are joining us virtually. Uh, we're sorry you couldn't be with us in person today, but we're so glad you joined us. As a reminder, this recording will be available on our website. And I would be remiss if I didn't share. Charlie has, has been so kind in uh, speaking with us and sharing today. She's also going to be on campus April 13th mm -hmm. for our Alumni Leadership and Volunteer Conference. So if you would like to see and hear more of Charlie, please join us for that conference April 13th. You can sign up on our website, Purdue for Life Foundation website. Thanks again for everybody joining us, and we'll see you next time.